like you don't bomb in Phantom, yo! In the digital landscape of 21st century criticism, films only garner rabid discussion when they fall into one of two categories. They're either flaming wrecks on which we toast to the marshmallows of Schadenfreude, or heartbreaking works of staggering genius on which to heap adoration and applause. While these polar opposites get the big word counts and compulsive clicks, I'd say a solid 90% of the movies I actually watch fall somewhere just left of the middle. I'm talking about shoulder shrug eliciting averageness and close but no cigar mediocrity. Sleepwalk your way through enough of these also rans, and if you're lucky, you'll find some flecks of gold amongst the gravel and grit. The overlong but unexpectedly nasty and unsettling The Cure for Wellness, all the meta messiness of Last Action Hero, every ugly crumb of running scared, those are just a few of the rewarding failures I go back to time after time. But my most fondly remembered two star oddity is 1998's clumsily endearing Phantoms. A creepypasta collage of cult appeal and hokey weirdness, whose legacy has all but been relegated to a Kevin Smith joke. Word, bitch, Phantoms like a motherfucker. What's up now? Uh, all right. Phantoms begins quaintly enough, with two sisters returning to small town Colorado, only to find it chillingly abandoned. It's not long before the bodies start to show themselves and an oily abomination makes itself known, leaving it up to these siblings, a troubled sheriff, and an oddball scientist to put the kibosh on an evil as old as the earth itself. Adapted from Dean Kuntz's novel of the same name by none other than the man himself, the first half of Phantoms takes its time kneading out its central mystery. How and why does an entire town vanish instantly? All right, what the hell's going on here? Food bubbles away on stoves for the eerily departed. The whispering wind swirls with atmospheric emptiness. Ashy snow drifts through lifeless streets, as if beckoned by some unseen malevolence. It's no surprise to find that the Silent Hill series took more than a pinch of inspiration from its uncomfortable ambience. The dark avenues the mind can take, when confronted with sobering absence, is endless fodder for nightmare fuel. And what makes the simple but curiosity-coaxing premise of Phantoms all the more effective is its basis in real-world events. You know, I assume, that history is filled with mysterious disappearances for which neither archaeologists nor anthropologists can provide adequate logical explanations. For example, take the disappearance of the Roanoke Colony. In 1590, over a hundred North Carolinian settlers vanished without a trace, leaving only one ambiguous word carved into the fort's gatepost. It's a chilling thought, a tight-knit community raptured in an instant. What Phantoms minds from this otherwise basic conceit is the dreadful, enveloping anxiety of darkness overtaking something as inherently familiar as small-town domesticity. When Kuntz plays his hand and the terror starts to take its malignant form, there is a terrible contrast between the uncannily ordinary and the awful unknown. Mountains of personal effects, jewellery, pacemakers and surgical plates piled up as an indigestible altar of what's left behind. Telephones that scream with the voices of the dead and the disappeared. These are just some of the ugly moments to be appreciated in the confusion, before Peter O'Toole shows up with all the exposition you could ever need. Just what is this thing? Chaos. Chaos in the flesh. O'Toole's presence here cannot be overstated. Better known for prestige pictures and crowd-rousing theatre, he exhales every ludicrous line with just enough restraint to give them some gravitas, 
but knowing when to turn up the pomp and presence required to sell the shit out of this pressed ham of a performance. It's just a fucking animal and any living thing can be killed. This thing is what wiped up the dinosaurs, which were pretty tough fucking customers. What do you want me to tell you? The commanding British voice of bonkers rationale that explains everything is being caused by an immortal, sentient goo creatively called the ancient enemy. An amoebic life form that surfaces every few centuries to feed on organic life. The idea that it absorbs the thoughts, feelings, and intellect of those it slurps up poses an interesting philosophical point, as it means that its callousness, hubris, and psychopathic penchant for playing with its food, it got all of that from us. It's a novel you are what you eat twist, on the whole, humans are the real monsters cliche that differentiates it from other amorphous entities of the genre by successfully personifying its fuckery. This pool of subterranean slime goes so far as to puppet around the corporeal remains of Liev Schrieber's extremely dead deputy, and thank god it does, because Schrieber's scenery chewing is Billy Zane and Demon Knight levels of fun. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> you wanna see something? How low can you go? So, for all its opening atmospherics, off the wall of crafty and oddness, and throwback eccentricity, why isn't Phantoms a stone cold classic? Or at the very least, a word of mouth cult resurgence waiting to happen? Well, as kind as I've been thus far to this schlocky singularity, it's patchier than a knitted condom. No. No. Oh no. One of the immediate issues with Phantoms is that it lacks any sort of visual identity. From the placeholder font of the opening titles, the overall unflattering lighting, and cinematography stuck somewhere between softcore pornography and an X-Files episode, there is a made-for-TV quality to this whole production that never jives with its loftier aspirations. I mean, even the poster looks like someone crazy glued some headshots together on the bumpy drive to the movie premiere. This lack of polish extends to the performances, which, out with O'Toole and Schrieber's scene-stealing efforts, sputter and stall from one word to the next. There could be a toxic component. Those people were decapitated. Rose McGowan bleats every syllable like a wayward lamb, mistaking passing cars for their mother. Oh, fuck you! Joanna Going is so wooden she starts to blend in with the chintzy furniture, and Ben Affleck? Well, Ben Affleck's the bomb, but not the good kind. Shot and released shortly before his breakout turn in Armageddon, the posture, charisma, and cadence aren't quite there. Which is to say, he shuffles through most scenes like a man trying to hold in an enema. Now these folks have all proven their talents elsewhere, which leads me to believe a decent portion of the blame lies with director Joe Chappelle. Responsible for one of the worst Halloween sequels, and a couple of straight-to-video stinkers, he never seems quite able to wrangle the contrasting beats of white-knuckle tension and knowing silliness on display in the screenplay which leads to some incongruous, unintentionally funny moments. Like when Affleck gets severely outacted by a shifty-eyed dog that's possessed by evil goop. You want me to replace the villain with a dog? I mean, nobody will know what's going on. They will if you set up that the dog is evil. All you have to do is show him doing this. <laughs> and people will suspect the dog. Chappelle would later go on to helm some of the best episodes of The Wire, Fringe, and Godfather of Harlem, which is great, because his small slate of features is hardly the kind of calling card anyone's after. The aforementioned shape-shifting tentacle dog, a clear nod to John Carpenter's The Thing, highlights an unfortunate reality when watching Phantoms within the wider scope of genre cinema. Much of what it has to offer was done to greater effect before or after. 
a small town ravaged by grotesque bastardizations of everyday creatures, calls to mind the mist, the viscous, flesh-eating mucus and the hazmat response team sent to stop it is the blob to a T, even an intangible ooze with the insidious affectation of the devil himself can be found in Prince of Darkness. I know comparison is the thief of joy, but it's tough to ignore just how short this falls of its betters. Yet, for all its low-budget production, creaky execution, and awkward farts of kitschy rubbish, Phantoms just about keeps its head above water. It manages to wrestle its obvious failings into something that works in spite of itself. The offbeat aura of the first act, the ugly menace of a slippery foe, a B-movie charm that's neither a piss-take or overly self-serious. In a sea of subpar genre throwbacks from the tail end of the 90s, you know, like Mimic, The Relic, and Virus, Phantoms always felt more like it belonged with the lovable likes of Deep Rising, Deep Blue Sea, and The Faculty. Or, at the worst, the underrated Sphere. Dean Koontz is a fine writer whose throne was usurped by the eclectic horror and prolific output of Stephen King and the high-concept pseudoscience of Michael Crichton. And as such, the adaptions of his work never attracted the studio support or A-list filmmakers of his contemporaries. Which leaves us Phantoms. A kindergarten doodle made with heart that I proudly put up on my fridge even if I know deep down that all the proportions are out of whack and everything looks squiggly. Phantoms is an imperfect mess more memorable than any number of successes, and one I'll always root for, no matter how much my brain tells me I should just give up the ghost. Leave Schreiber on five rails of coke for our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire MD, Becky O, and Nicholas Lairevere, and a yes I did accidentally say the C word multiple times when trying to say the name Koontz, for all these amazing folks who support us over on Patreon. So have you seen Phantoms? And do you think it's good, bad, a guilty pleasure, or a brown paper bag filled with poo? Let us know in the comments, and sound off about your favourite films that are inarguably flawed, clumsy, and kind of crummy, but you unabashedly love all the same. The best way to support this channel is to make sure you're subscribed, like these videos, and leave a comment below for engagement. If you're in a position to do so, consider checking out our Patreon at the link in the description below, where you can get access to the Infremount Film Club, our private Discord, and have your name featured in the credits. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Infremount. Out.